Our scripture today is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. This is the New International Version. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. As you probably know, I've had an unfortunate last few weeks. Vacation was great, but Steve and I came home with COVID. We spent the next week at home under isolation, coughing, blowing our noses, and taking Paxlovid, the antiviral drug that's being used to treat COVID. Then we recovered. I felt great. On that Friday when I woke up though, I wondered why I felt sick again. I did a COVID test and it was positive. That's when I learned that on rare occasions, among people that pay, take Paxlovid, a rebound infection occurs. Even though I felt great and had a negative test, the infection was still there to start all over again. And that's how I spent last week. It was a couple weeks of wasted time although I did have plenty of opportunity to reflect. Here's my first observation. COVID brain is real. Many people report that COVID caused them to have mental fogginess, and I can verify that this is true. I spent most of my time being unable to think my way out of a paper bag. All I wanted to do was sit and stare at the TV. Complex, abstract thought was an impossibility. The most depth I could manage was what to have for lunch. My second observation seems obvious, but there's nothing like COVID to center your thoughts on this. Our connection to each other is really important. Being stuck at home with COVID, I needed help. Our son Devin and Nancy Crandall, our youth director, got us groceries. Our son Chris went to the pharmacy and got our prescriptions. Bonnie, Shirley, Jerry, Linda, and my friend Judy stepped right up to take care of the Wednesday meal I was responsible for. Dave volunteered to do last week's worship service. Several people brought me gifts of food, and many called and texted and sent get well cards, offering prayers and to do errands. My needs were taken care of, and I felt very loved and supported. I was isolated in our home, but not alone. The power of the love of this church family was very real, and I was held in its care. I am far from the first person in history to need this kind of care. This is actually one of the major attractions of the early church, a community and family of people that cared for each other was an innovation at the time. Life was hard. Sickness, poverty, and oppression were all around, and a support system was a beacon of light in that darkness. The fact of a loving church family was one thing that drew people to the church. First Peter makes it clear what the foundation of that family was. Above all, love each other deeply. This is the first priority of the church. And then he gives examples of what that looks like. Be hospitable. Don't grumble. Serve. Speak with God's words. These were ways to show care for each other. Here's good news for us as a congregation. We are doing great community outreach. We have formed positive working relationships with the food pantry, the fire department, the chamber of commerce, the park district, and more. 
We are reaching people in our neighborhood with hope, love, and light. We even have a community service award to prove it. This isn't something we can now check off our to-do list. It's an ongoing effort to be an outpost of the kingdom of God in Oregon that, like the early church, draws people to God with our love for our neighbor. More good news. We are also called to turn our focus inward to our relationships with each other. My COVID brain tells me that our connections are vitally important to the health of our church and of us as individuals. How are we doing? How can we do better? I heard an interesting story on episode 757 of the National Public Radio blog, This American Life. Boris Furman developed a new hobby in his retirement. He and his wife have four children and several grandchildren who are spread out over the United States. He regularly asks his children and grandchildren what town they spent the night in. Some members of his family regularly travel, so this varies. He looks up the latitude and longitude of every place a family member spent the night, then does some math to calculate what he calls the family average location. This is a town somewhere in the U.S. that is at the exact geographic center of the location of every family member. Every few weeks, he emails the family, tells them where the family average location is, and offers a paragraph of facts about that place. His family has reacted with baffled amusement. No one really understands why he does this. They read his emails, but don't usually reply. They aren't really interested in facts about a random town and don't get why their dad spends so much time on this seemingly meaningless hobby. The interviewer was persistent, though. She wanted to know his reasons. Boris said, Our being a family is important. This was a way for me to track where the kids were and that everything was fine with them and also what they were doing and the family average location was just sort of an idea of a way to integrate it all. And here's a little background. Boris's parents escaped the Holocaust, but lost every member of their families. When Boris was growing up, one cousin was all he ever had a family outside his parents his son has come to feel that Boris's family average location is a kind of redemption of this tragic situation. The reporter sums it up. When he sits down to record the family average location, it's kind of like he is saying a prayer, a math prayer, not just to record where they all are, but that they all are. So here's what I'm reflecting on. What is our family average location? Not in regard to where we all sleep at night, but in regard to our hearts. What kind of a prayer are we saying with our love for each other? What can I and you do to better love our siblings in Christ? And how can we as a church love each other better? Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for all you have blessed our church with, for fellowship, for vision, for ministry and worship. We are grateful. We ask that you continue your work in and through us. Help us reach our neighbors with your hope, love, and light. And also help us be Jesus to each other. Bless our words and actions that all in this place would be loved, respected, and cared for. In the name of Christ who saves us. Amen.